uh, neighboring municipalities. Um, the focus of my conversation today, though, is not on, on the opportunities of, of those two cities, though. It's to, to really look regionally and look at uh, the city of Surrey when it comes to it comes to transportation. Now, it doesn't matter. I could be in any of the 21 municipalities in, in Metro Vancouver, and I'm pretty sure transportation is going to be one of the, the top issues. Uh, but I know, uh, in particular, it's a significant issue here in, in the city of Surrey. And I think a lot has to do with, with how Surrey is, has evolved and uh, really grown, grown up over the past, uh, past number of decades. Surrey is the fastest growing uh, municipality in, in, uh, in, in Metro Vancouver, and it's also the second largest, and soon, within a few decades, will be the largest uh, uh, municipality in the Metro Vancouver, Metro Vancouver region. Uh, but what I think is even more interesting about the, the transformation and evolution from, from a city a Surrey perspective is Surrey is moving from being uh, a very large suburban community in, in, in Metro Vancouver uh, to really coming to its own and becoming a, a more diverse uh, urban uh, city in, in our community. And with that, uh, no doubt brings a lot of opportunities uh, and exciting uh, exciting changes in the city of Surrey, uh, but it also brings, uh, you know, what I'd say is more big city problems, more urban problems there. And, you know, I think transportation uh, fits in, into that regard. A big part of that is, uh, you know, a more urban community needs more transportation options, and and that's where I think uh, public transit and, and Translink have to uh, have to be looking at big opportunities to to partner. Now, over the past few months, uh, the city of Surrey has, has been in the news a lot uh, regarding uh, public transit and, and, and Translink, and uh, I will uh, will get to talking about uh, uh, rapid transit expansion south of the Fraser River, but I wanted to start off by talking about. Uh, you know, what I would say is a bit of an untold uh, success story here in, in, in the city of Surrey. It's a story that has not, uh, not gotten any media attention, not uh, made big news, but to me I think it is uh, a statistic that is, is, is really incredible. Uh, in 2018, transit ridership south of the Fraser River increased by 15.6%. Now, uh, that is a, a staggering number uh, in, in, terms of, in terms of increase. There's over 50 million annual transit borderings now uh, south, of, uh, south of the Fraser. Uh, transit has been expanding in all cities across, uh, across Metro Vancouver, uh, but not to this, uh, to this level. Uh, this 15.6 increase, uh, annual increase, is, uh, is, is, is actually the largest recorded increase by any sub-region uh, ever, ever, ever documented. And to me, that's a, that's a pretty big story, and it, it tells that something is happening south of the Fraser, something is happening in its largest municipality, the city of Surrey, about how transportation system is evolving and, uh, and, and being used. Now, there are a number of factors uh, involved with that. Uh, some of it would be the, uh, the decades of, of land use change and planning that has, has occurred uh, in, in the city of Surrey. But a big part of that story is the significant new investments that are being made into, uh, in, into transit. Uh, we have one million additional service bus hours that have been added to, uh, to the south of Fraser, Fraser River in the past, uh, past couple of years. And it is this increase here that is, uh, is starting to actually materialize in changing travel patterns and increasing tra public transit use. Now, although I would count this as a huge success story and something that I think uh, the city of Surrey really should be, be touting because I think it's not only leading the region, but I would venture to guess that uh, the city of Surrey's transit increase is actually leading uh, Canada and the United States. Like this is, this is not a small, uh, small change that's happening. This is a pretty significant uh, change in, in transportation patterns that are, that are happening. But despite the fact that I think we have a huge success story on our hands, uh, this is also a double-edged sword. Uh, we are now seeing a congestion in, in a different way that Surrey has never seen before. I think we're all familiar about traffic congestion in all of our municipalities. Uh, I'm from New Westminster, so uh, traffic congestion is not something that is, uh, is, is new to us. But what you're facing is, is actually transit congestion. We have 11 routes south of the Fraser that are now facing chronic, uh, chronic overcrowding. So uh, to me, I think this is a signal that we need even more investment uh, in, in public transit. Uh, and, and that needs to be focused on, on regions that are growing, regions that are building their cities to, to actually coordinate with, uh, with public transit. We are now two years into the mayor's uh, tenure plan, and uh, this is a plan that is investing billions of dollars in transit uh, infrastructure and transit service all across the, the Metro Vancouver region. Uh, very, uh, very intently though, uh, a lot of that focus is on developing into what I would say new service areas that traditionally have not had uh, the levels of transit service that maybe the city of Vancouver has had. And this has led to, you know, as I talked about, significant uh, numbers of, of people getting onto, onto transit. 
But I think I would be remiss if I if I walked off this podium and didn't uh, didn't talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, what's happening with uh, with the rapid transit project in, in, in the city of Surrey? And I'm going to take you back to to election night uh, back in October October last year. Um, you know, we all run in our own municipalities and. We focus on our, our local issues, and I probably spent two two plus months on the doorsteps in the city of Westminster. And I'll be honest, I wasn't really paying attention to what was happening in, in other cities and in their local elections. So I got to uh, to our election night party, and, and I had been reelected, so I was uh, feeling feeling pretty good. And uh, took the opportunity to to have a few beers because it had been been a long month. And uh, after that, I broke uh, broke a rule that I always try to follow: is never talk to the media after having a few beers. <laughs> So one of the first questions was posed to me uh, was, uh, you know, the, there's a brand new mayor in, in the city of Surrey, and uh, and he wants to dramatically change uh, a, a big component of, of the transit plan uh, south of the south of the Fraser River. Uh, my first uh, knee gut uh, response was that is absolutely ridiculous and crazy. Um, now that wasn't the most diplomatic response to to that that I, I could have given, but ultimately. That's where I was at that, that particular junction. Uh, you know, I, I proudly served on, on the mayor's council last term, worked with a dedicated group of, of mayors that put together the, the mayor's 10-year plan, which really is, is a roadmap for, for investment. Now, fast forward a, a month from there, though, and um, you know, I've been given the opportunity to, to, chair, to chair the mayor's, mayor's council. And I think from there, I've, I've had the opportunity to take some time to take a more thoughtful and pragmatic approach to, uh, to, to a change in direction uh, that was really uh, spurned from from a new new uh, new election here in the city of Surrey. And, you know, I think the reality is uh, the city of Surrey did voice for for some changes in in their local election. And uh, you know, new mayor McCallum can't say he didn't uh, didn't talk about uh, this issue during during the last local election. This was one of what I would say two major issues in the city of Surrey. And I think we can't uh, can't dis dismiss uh, uh, the the level of conversation and and the result from 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 that election. So. Uh, you know, the reality is the, the Mayor's Council has been faced is that we've got $1.6 billion of secured funding to invest in, in rapid transit. That money has been allocated to, uh, to the city of Surrey and, uh, and, and south of the Fraser River for very good reason. And, uh, you know, I have every reason to, to try and translate that money into, uh, into a real uh, significant and positive uh, rapid transit project in, in, in the city of Surrey. Uh, back in December, uh, the mayor's council did have to make the, the difficult decision to, to put a halt on the uh, on, on the light rail project to to, to Newton and uh, Newton and Guildford, and this was not a decision that was an easy one around around that table, particularly given the amount of, of work that had gone into that project. Uh, having said that, construction had not yet started on that project, and uh, uh, it was still at a point where we could uh, we could adjust to uh, a new, very strong position that was coming from uh, from from the city city of Surrey. Uh, so, our next steps uh, are to, to to now actually dig a little bit deeper. Of what does that mean? Uh, rapid transit, SkyTrain technology, and, and focusing on on the Fraser River uh, Fraser High Highway corridor. Um, I think it's important to, to recognize that uh, this transit project, although a change in direction, wasn't pulled out of, out of thin air. Uh, for, for many, many years, uh, the Fraser Highway corridor has been studied and identified as having a significant uh, transit potential and a way to help uh, shape growth uh, south of the Fraser River. So it is not a, not a completely foreign project and it's one that was actually already <coughs> contemplated for rapid transit uh, in, the, in the mayor's 10-year uh, mayor's plan. But we need to do our work because our focus uh, during uh, during the last term was to get the light rail project up and up and going, and we now need to to answer the really important questions of what does it look like transferring uh, that funding to uh, to a different project in in, in a different uh, different location. Uh, I'm anticipating uh, some point, probably the mid uh, midpoint of, of 2019. Uh, this draft business plan is going to come back to the Mayor's Council. It's going to answer questions about with the funding we have available, how are we able to, uh, to translate that into, uh, into expansion of, of rapid transit into Surrey, what does that look like, who is that going to serve, what are the ridership protection, uh, projections, how is that going to impact all of the other bus service that, uh, that integrates in, in our region. And at that time, the Mayor's Council is going to uh, have to make a, an important decision about what are the next steps, are we going to be able to advance that project to, uh, uh, to, to the next step. 
Uh, if the business case comes up positive and shows that this is a really strong uh, transit project, uh, you know, my gut's going to tell me it's going to have the support to, to, to be able to, to move forward. Um, but I think with any transit project, we want to make sure that we are applying good, uh, good planning and, and transit uh, uh, principles uh, to, uh, to that. Now, that won't be the end of the story though. Um, the next step, we'll be recognizing there are other major funding partners that have to be involved and have already put their money forward to, to this project, namely the provincial and, and federal government. And so far what we've heard is if the mayor's council in the region is behind this project, they too will also get behind this project. But there are processes, there are treasury boards, uh, there are ministers in which uh, this does have to be approved both at the federal and the provincial level given that those are major funding, funding, funding uh, uh, partners. And then after that, 2020, if everything all aligns and comes together, then we'll be in a position to be looking into uh, to procurement and the more detailed design about translating this into, into a real uh, transit project. So we're not there yet and we have a number of hurdles to fill, but uh, uh, the Mayor's Council has got 1.6 billion reasons why, uh, uh, why we've got a vested interest to, to be able to, to, to move forward. Now, it's uh, not lost on me being a, a former resident of, of Newton and uh, an attendee of uh, Newton Junior, uh, Junior High School uh, that, uh, that there are a couple of neighborhoods uh, in, in Surrey that uh, uh, you know, have kind of been switched around when it comes to, to transit priorities. And uh, you know, I think a lot of the focus in the community and the media has been about the change in technology between light rail and, and SkyTrain. And there's a very good public discussion on that. But there hasn't been as public of a discussion about actually changing the location because that's another part of the request we've received from, from the city of Surrey is to focus on uh, the Fraser Highway corridor, which I touched upon earlier. Uh, but I think we do need to recognize uh, we've got other really important and growing neighborhoods in our community, uh, in your community. Uh, Newton and Guilford are areas that are growing, that are developing to become more transit-oriented oriented development. So I think in, in the short term, we've already recognized that this is not an issue that, uh, that we can just put aside. Uh, these are areas and, and, and parts of the region that have received commitment for transit improvements. Uh, in the short term, uh, we are actually going to reallocate uh, uh, some of the funding that we have towards D-Line investment in the region to, to see improvements to the, the rapid bus D-Line that's already in place in Newton. Recognizing that this is, uh, you know, I believe, a neighborhood of of over 150,000 uh, residents in that area and an area that's already been slated for, uh, uh, for rapid transit improvement. We think that at the very least we need to get some investments on the ground right away to, to an area that to, to even at the very least address some of the, the crowding and, and service issues that exist in, in that part. Longer term though, we need to, to focus uh, about what is going to be the next, uh, next stage. The mayor's 10-year plan has three phases in it and Although uh, Guilford and Newton were anticipated to be covered in light rail in phase two, um, to me now the focus on the phase three of the mayor's 10-year plan has to say how can we de deliver an effective transit project to, to, to those regions so that those regions aren't, uh, aren't left out in, uh, in, in, in the political machinations that have, have led us to, to the point we are right now. So in conclusion, uh, you know, I, I need to state that you know, by 2041, uh, the south of the Fraser sub-region, uh, part, of, part of TransLake, is anticipated to grow by 400,000 residents and 200,000 jobs. Now, those are pretty staggering and pretty significant numbers. And, uh, and on one end, that uh, you know, I think that presents us with a really exciting opportunity and an exciting way to be able to shape the land uses, to shape how transportation happens into this region, and really to help uh, fulfill Surrey's long-term vision of, of kind of moving to uh, to to a more uh, uh, urban uh, city environment, uh, mixing with uh, with its uh, more suburban suburban past. Uh, my focus on the Mayor's Council is going to be taking the advantage we have, taking the funding that we have on the table, and seeing what we can do to actually translate those to real public transit investments and really help, uh, help Surrey uh, move, into, move into the future uh, with, a, with a strong transportation future. So thank you so much.